Welcome to Introduction to Logic, Unit 3, Lecture 2, Part 2. In this lecture, you'll learn how to construct truth tables to investigate whether or not a proposition has a truth value that is determined by the objective rules of logic itself, or by the contingent facts of the empirical world, that is, however the universe turns out to be. Further, you'll learn how to construct truth tables to compare the logical relationships between propositions. One of the interesting things we learn in our exploration of logic is that there are some statements whose truth values are fixed by the objective rules of reason, meaning that they will be true or false in every conceivable world. But there are other statements whose truth values are determined by the actual facts of the world. We refer to the former as logical propositions and the latter as contingent propositions. This has useful implications in the various fields of philosophy like metaphysics, axiology, and epistemology. Using truth tables, we can visualize precisely why some propositions must be true, while others must be false. These are called tautologies, or self-contradictory statements, respectively. Any claim whose truth function is not determined by the objective rules of reason will be governed by the actual facts of the world itself and these are what we call contingent propositions. Let's start by looking at an example of a tautology, P or not P. You might recognize this as Hamlet's question when he considers killing himself over his grief for his dead father in Act 3, Scene 1. This statement is fairly intuitive in its meaning. Either something is the case or it's not, but it certainly can't be both. Of course, we don't have to rely on our intuitions here, since we have truth tables. So let's work out a truth table for this proposition to see what actually is the case from a logical point of view. Since we only have one simple proposition, we will only need two lines on our truth type table marking the two logical possibilities for the proposition P. Now, we can look at universe 1 and bring our truth values over directly under the proposition. Next, we solve for the negation of P on the right-hand side of the disjunction. Now we determine the truth function of the disjunction, and since this operator tells us that only one of the two disjuncts has to be true, it's going to be true. Next, we do the same thing for universe 2, and then solve for the disjunction. Again, we see that it will be true since at least one of the two disjuncts is itself true. Now that our table is complete, we see that in all possible worlds for this claim, it's true. That's what logically true statements or tautologies are. It's a statement in which it must be true in all possible worlds. Next, let's look at the conjunction of P and not P. Like our last example, this one is fairly clear, intuitively speaking. Something can't both be and not be at the same time, which is precisely what conjunction tells us from a logical point of view. Both statements have to be true. But let's prove this with a truth table. Next, bring over the truth values for P in universe 1, and note it directly under the proposition on the table. Next, solve for the negation of P on the right side of the conjunction. Since conjunction tells us that both of the simple propositions must be true in order for the conjunction to be true, the statement will be false in universe 1. Next, we do the same thing for universe 2. Again, we find that one is true and the other is false, so the conjunction of the two will have to be false. Since this statement is false in all possible worlds, it is said to be logically false, or self-contradictory. Now, while there are a large number of statements that are either logically true or false, that number pales in comparison to the total number of propositions, which approximates infinity. These will sometimes be true and sometimes be false, depending upon how the world actually turns out to be. These are called contingently true propositions. 
Let's take a simple example, like the conjunction of the two propositions P and Q. Now, of course, we've done this truth table before, so you'll remember that because we have two propositions, we'll have four possible worlds to consider, since the number of lines on a truth table is determined by the two possible truth values to the power of the number of propositions. So in this case, we have four lines. Since we have four lines, we're going to take half of that number, and that determines the number of trues that we'll put down first. Then we divide that number in half, which gives us one. So we'll start with one true, then false, then true, then false. Now we're ready to solve the truth function of P and Q, which of course will only be true in universe 1, since conjunction requires both simple propositions to be true. Since this statement is sometimes true but sometimes false, it is said to be contingent. The truth of this proposition is governed by how the world actually turns out to be, not the logic of the statement itself. In Unit 2, we learned about contradictions. You'll recall on the square of opposition that the A and O, as well as the E and I categorical propositions, were said to be contradictions because they always have opposite truth values. But natural language propositions can also be contradictory so long as they also have opposite truth values. We can use truth tables to compare the logical relationships between any two propositions to see if they're contradictory. Let's take if P then Q and compare it to P and not Q to see what the truth table tells us about them. Fill in the truth values for each universe. To speed things along, we can go ahead and solve for the truth value of not Q as we go. Now we can solve for the material implication of if P then Q. Remember that material implication will always be true, except for the case where the antecedent is true, but the consequent is false. Now let's solve for the conjunction of P and not Q. When we compare the truth functions of each proposition, we find that in each universe, they have exactly opposite truth values. That means that these two propositions are contradictory to each other. Wherever one is false, the other will be true, and vice versa. Now sometimes, two propositions will have exactly the same truth value in each and every possible world. In that case, we call them equivalent propositions. This will be very useful in the next unit, as equivalent propositions are like synonyms, which means that we can exchange one for the other without losing the logical meaning of the statement. Let's look at two material implications. Now we can solve for the main operator of each proposition. When we've completed the truth table and look at the truth value of each proposition in each universe, we find that they have exactly the same truth value in each universe. In universe 1, they're both true. In universe 2, they're both false. In universes 3 and 4, they're both true. Because they have the same truth value in each one of the universes, we discover that these propositions are logically equivalent, and we could always exchange one with the other without the loss of any logical meaning whatsoever. 
Sometimes, however, propositions will neither have opposite truth values, nor will they have the same truth values in each universe. But if there is at least one universe where they're both true, we call them logically consistent. Let's compare P or Q and P and Q. Once we've filled out our truth table, we find that in universe 1, both propositions are true. They have different truth values in the other universes, but there's only one where both of them are true. Since there is at least one universe where both are true, we know that these propositions are properly called consistent. But sometimes when we compare two propositions, we discover that there are no universes where both propositions are true. In that case, we have logically inconsistent propositions. When we compare the final truth functions of P if and only if Q and P and not Q, we discover that there are no universes where they are both true. Hence, we have logically inconsistent propositions. In this mini-lecture, We've learned how to use truth tables to examine the logical status of single propositions, as well as how to compare propositions to determine their logical relationships to one another. These concepts will be extremely important in the next unit, as we'll see. However, we have one more use for our truth tables. In the next mini-lecture, we'll learn how to use truth tables to determine the validity of symbolized natural language arguments. In doing so, we'll discover that there are some very common forms of arguments which, once we've proven them valid, we can use to construct our own arguments as well as validate other natural language arguments. See you next time!